Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, today's video is about camp life for a medieval bowman in an English army. It was uh, asked for by one of my Patreon members, Michael Swatton. And so I've done my Kevin thing is I've made a model. Now, you've got to excuse me. I'm recovering from COVID. I've been sick, but I'm not too bad at the moment. I'm proving negative. So I thought I'd do this little... Uh, video for you. Camp life, medieval camps. It's something I didn't know, that there was a guy called the Harbinger. I'd heard of the Harbinger of Doom. He's, that, he's coming to your town and telling you that there's an army behind him and you've got to put them up because that was the Harbinger's job. If you're not going to camp out in the open, you're going to go to a town, he will sort out, him and his men, all of the billeting. He had armed men with him. He was a man of station. You didn't mess around with this man because this is the guy who will make sure that there is food, there is accommodation. So he is the man you've got to keep on the right side of. But there was a, a formula. If you had a massive camp, if it was an army camp, there were four roads yeah, that literally crossed the camp. In the center of the camp was the marketplace and also where the commanders had their pavilions. Many of the pavilions, these enormous medieval tents, were actually joined by corridors. So they didn't actually go out of their, let's say, their meeting tent into their sleeping tent. But the idea of this is, is to kind of give us an idea how your archer lived. And then you've, you've got to consider archers were valuable and they were appreciated, especially come the latter part of the Hundred Years' War. Let's not go too deep into there because the French with their guns, shh, later video. But into the Wars of the Roses, uh, the bowman really was the elite. Um, Earl of Warwick reckoned that his household bowman, one of them was worth two of anybody else's bowman. So they were paid sixpence a day, not bad wages for the day, but they're also given uh, extra things like bonuses, a house to live in, yeah, for him and his family clothing passed down from his noble lord. So these guys, they looked the business. They had good bows, superb arrows. So when you took them on campaign, the last thing you want is your teeth arm, your aggressive bowman to be shivering under the hedges. The camps were designed to be as comfortable as they could be. And the wagon trains that contain these camps some of the uh, noblemen, they had so many wagons full of their tentage and then you had the people who were employed simply to put the camp up and then strip the camp down, pack it away and the wagoners and away they went. The wagon trains that contain these camps were miles upon miles long. I've actually covered this, I think uh, I've done a video before, the baggage train, so you could look that one up. But what I've done is I've made a model Right, so the harbingers come along. This is a minor camp, so let's say it's for a company or two. The first thing he's got to make sure that there is fresh water. So we have water on camp. Also plenty of firewood for the fires. Plenty of trees around here, no problems at all. And then sighting the latrines. It's very, very important that the latrines are away and it's, it's hygienic because the curse of the medieval army, or the curse of any army really, is disease. Dysentery, that's the one, the bloody flux. You don't want it. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you around. Oh, hang on a second. Little tips that I keep reading about. So I'm reading about how they set camp. So this one's nice and open, we must be in friendly territory. No problems, but if you're in enemy territory, you fortify your camp with a ditch. And I thought, oh, that's just like the Romans. Well, yeah, because the commanders in the medieval times read Vegetius, Epitome of Military Science. I've got the book. And when I found out that they read the same book as me, I'm kind of going, wow, I'm learning from the books that they learned from. And it's just, wow. And then there was also, there was discipline here. So the last thing you want is bowmen falling out or men at arms falling out. So there was a code of discipline, and it was the Earl of Shrewsbury. This is just after Agincourt, so I understand. It was sick to death of gangs of whores, prostitutes, yeah, camp followers, 
following the army, causing problems. So he banned them. And if you were caught with a group of these ladies within your accommodation, then that'll cost you in a fine a month's wages. But the girls themselves were in danger here. It was very severe. They would be thrown out, all of their money confiscated, and then there's a little bit added on the end and break their arms. So this is serious business when you think about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you around my camp just a little bit to, uh, to show you what I've done. The one thing that's missing here is the horse lines and I just didn't have room. So a little tour of my camp. Let's start off with the, the not so nice end. What I've done here is I've got laborers working away, they're digging a grave pit. So we've either had a bit of uh, dysentery or something, or there's some casualties from a previous conflict and they're disposing of them now. Now in that field away from the camp over here, we have the latrines and we have a guy there who's straining his guts out that away from the camp, and so they're not going to flood the camp if they overflow. But when we go into the camp itself, we have a wagon train that's just arrived. And this one here, this model I've got here is great because it shows you how much kit they carried. I mean, I've got another wagon, a covered wagon here parked uh, up and people are continually unloading it. These were enormous constructions. So as we come round to the back of the camp here, we've got a, a pot on the boil. That'll be pottage, pottage, oat-based stew. I've had many a bowl of pottage. I've had peas pottage, cabbage pottage. I've had pottage with fish in it, with bacon in it. I've had every pottage you can imagine. Now, if I remember correctly, now if anybody knows anything about this to substantiate it, I'd love to hear from you. Back in England, there was a pub that had a pottage bowl and what they did every day it was never allowed to go cold. It was boiled up. They added stuff to it every day and there was never a case of food poisoning, but that pottage bowl had been going for approximately 200 years. So I understand. Now this is one of the legends you pick up. Yeah. It was only stopped through the European government giving uh, food standards or something like that. Now I do like a drop of pottage, but there's another little thing, if this is true, about the Scots with their pottage. They used to let it go cold and then cut the oatmeal cake off the top, lay it down and lace it with spirits, what we call whiskey, scotch, and that will be contained for the winter time and it would ferment. If you know about these things, let me know because I, I love these little tidbits. So you've got a pottage bowl here. Now they would transport their pottage bowl with coals attached to them to keep them warm. And then they will boil them up uh, when it's ready for the meal. This is great things, the way things are moving. But I've got laborers, common workers. They've got their lean-to shelters or they're just underneath a wagon. And then you come in, you, we've got the nobleman's pavilion here. Archer's accommodation, yeah, another tentage here, but the camp isn't complete. The workers are going on, the ladies have started the cooking. A portable oven, I find that fascinating, that they would have a portable oven so they can have bread, fresh baked bread. So you've got bakers, you've got cooks, you've got all of these different people on top of the soldiers. So as I go round, there's somebody else cooking there. There is a lady here. I got a couple of girls there. So they would be on camp, but these aren't the year camp followers. These are wives. These are part of the family. There is your water barrel and you've got men queuing up there to fill up. So I've made it so this would be moved, refilled and brought back for the fresh water. Fodder for the animals. I've got some laborers working away over here on captured pavises. So they'll be stripping the paint off those or over painting them. Uh, and then finally, my favorite bit, I've done some archery practice. So I've made a butts, couple of targets on posts and the archers are shooting away. Vitally important that the bowmen prove themselves. 
they keep themselves fit, strong, healthy. So the system worked. It had to work and it had to be good. But there were times when it could break down. If the harbingers had got it wrong, if the camp was too big. Take Harfleur, Henry V's camp at Harfleur must have been enormous. Dysentery, a third of his army dead from dysentery, I understand, at Harfleur, and a third of his army had to be sent back. So the latrines were obviously placed in the wrong um, situation there. The weather was bad, the water was bad, it was a disaster. Henry V marches his army north towards Calais, which resulted in the Agincourt battle, but they couldn't take tents. There were pack horses. Million and a half arrows, you ain't got room for tents. So the men on the march there would have slept very rough. So they could, yeah, because it wasn't a disaster at the end of the day. Look at the battle itself. They were able to fight. And this is another reflection on the character of these men, English and Welsh, medieval times. And, and it's interesting camp life. We've got everything going on, but once... The archers have finished practice, the wagons are away in the wagon lines and the horses are all seen to. Then it's downtime. And uh, what would it have been like? Well, I've done the big reenactment camps and it's wonderful when somebody pulls out a flute and simply plays a tune and they sing. And of course, there will be ale. There will be games, Nine Man's Morris, for instance, even backgammon. But uh, you've got to have active sports, haven't you? The old early forms of football and wrestling and all of these kind of things would have been going on. And there would have been laughter because something I've learned is they had a sense of humour just like me and they liked to joke. So the camp would have been bustling, smoking, bustling, the aroma of food, stay away from the latrines, you don't want that aroma. And the sound of music as it wafts around. Camp life, it couldn't have been that bad, could it? Well, I hope you enjoyed our little video there. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. And please turn on the notifications button, the all notification button, so you know what's coming on down the line. We've got lots ready to film. And now a special shout out for three of my Patreons, Lexi, Mark Wright, a Mark Andervold. Hey guys, thanks a million. Your support keeps this going. Bye for now.